What's up folks, welcome to Math Walkthroughs with Mr. Weeb. Today we are representing the subtraction of fractions, and this is our lesson three action task. Let's get right to it. It says, figure out the differences and show your thinking. So first we have two thirds minus two fourths. And to show this one, I'm going to set up, I'm going to set up a grid, okay? And basically along one side, I want to split it into thirds. So I'm going to split it up into thirds along this way, best I can. Um, those aren't very good, I, we can do better than that. Let's try here. There, that looks a little bit better. And then we're gonna split it into four equal spaces along this way. So that now I've got it split into fourths, if you look at the columns, and if you look at the rows, I've got it split into thirds. Now let's put in some shapes Let's make them circles. And I'm gonna put in the red circles, filling in two thirds of these. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There, two thirds, right? Two out of the three rows. And now I'm going to put in blue circles, but just in half of it, two out of the four columns. There's one column, there's two columns. Okay, now how are we going to do this? What we're going to do is I'm going to move these dots over here. And it almost works like the positive counters and negative counters. Basically, all of those red ones uh, I'm, are going to be taken away by those blue ones, right? They kind of cancel each other out. So in essence, what we have is 2 thirds minus 2 fourths, giving us how many do we have left? Well, we've got one, two circles out of how many total spots are there in this shape? Well, if it's a three by four grid, you can just multiply three times four and you'll find out that there are 12 total. So on your denominator, there's 12 and in your numerator, it's two. At this point, we should simplify this because you can see that if this shape was divided into pieces that were this big, Right? How many of them would we have that were two squares big? We'd have one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we can split this shape into six pieces where one of them is covered in dots because uh, we have to remember that all of these have been taken away. All of these red ones have been taken away by these blue ones. So these are kind of like zero pairs, okay? So we're left with one sixth here. Next, we've got two fourths minus two fifths and two fourths is bigger than two fifths. So we're going to take this shape and we're going to split it into four along one dimension and five along the other. So let's split it this way. Let's split it into four along here. Good enough. And let's split it into five along here. Next, I'm going to fill two fourths of it with red circles. So here we go. There's one fourth and there are two fourths. And we will fill two fifths with blue circles. There's one fifth and two out of five with blue circles. Now, let's, let's move these uh, blue circles on top of some red circles and these kind of cancel out because we're having the red and we're taking away the blue. So the red is being taken away the blue, by the blue. And what are we left with? Well, we've got two again, except the denominator is going to be different. Let's see how this looks. So we have two fourths minus two fifths is going to give us two out of what? Now our denominator has to be different because we have a, a different number of squares in this shape, right? Now it's four times five. We have a total of 20 spaces in here. So we have two twentieths or one tenth. And we can do that because I can divide each of these by two, right? Two divided by two is one and 20 divided by two is 10. Okay, interesting. Next, let's look at two fifths 
take away two sixths. Again, I'm going to use the same shape. Now I see that my workspace is looking a little bit messy, so I'm just going to clean it up or try to clean it up a little bit by putting a box around each of these uh, pieces that I've done already to keep them separated a little bit. Okay, now this one I'm looking at has a denominator of five and six. So I'm going to split one side into five and the other side into six. So here we have it split into five uh, rows and six columns. And we can now fill it with two fifths of them with red circles. So two fifths is gonna look like this. Well, these circles are not the best, but you know, it's all right. Okay, so there's two out of five rows filled. And now we're gonna fill two out of six, two out of six of these columns filled with blue. Okay, we've got two out of six columns filled there. And now we're going to take away a bunch of them. Okay, so this shows that this one is take, the red one is being taken away by the blue one. This blue one, hmm, it's not working. Let's zoom in a little bit and see if I can get a hold of these guys. There we go. Let's just move these over. And what have we got? Oh, look at that. Well, it looks like, it looks like we have a pattern happening here. So when we have two fifths minus two sixths, we end up with two out of 30 total possible spots. Do you notice this pattern here? Have a look. You notice that we had two twelfths here, two twentieths here, two thirtieths here. Let's see if our numerator is going to be two again. Okay, let's see. So we've got two sixths minus two sevenths. So now with this shape, I'm gonna cut it into six rows and seven columns. So there it all is, six rows, seven columns, and let's get some circles in here. We need two sixths filled up with red circles. So here we go. Red circles coming right up. There's one sixth and two sixths. And now we need two sevenths. So there's one seventh and two out of seven columns filled. Next, we're going to take away, all these red ones are being taken away by the blue ones. And what are we left with? Let's see, looks like when we have two sixths, taking away two sevenths, we end up with, again, two, but now the denominator is going to be a six, six by seven grid. So six times seven is 42. I don't have to count each one of these. I could count by sixes or by sevens if I wanted to, right? If I have seven, I could go seven, 14, 21, etc. but I don't have to, I know that the answer is 42. So again, we have the case where each of these numerators was two. It's very interesting. So, uh, and I can see that we've already answered the second question, which is what pattern do you see in the differences? I might say this. Each of the numerators and the answers were two and the denominators were always the product of the two denominators. See, three times four is 12. Four times five is 20. Five times six is 30, and so on. Okay, how could you use the pattern to predict this difference? Well, let's see. If we had 2 thirds minus 2 fourths being 2 twelfths, and 2 fourths minus 2 fifths being 2 twentieths, this one is always coming right before this one, right? Three, four, they're just in order. Four, five, five, six. So if it's 100 and 101, we could just say that we know that the numerator is going to be two 
and the denominator is going to be one multiplied by the other. So the, uh, the denominator will be one, oh, one, oh, oh, 10,100, I believe. Yep, that's it. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.